Praise the Lord from Africa, Nairobi, Kenya. We are blessed of the Lord. The anointing of the Lord is upon us and we bless his holy name. He who called us is forever faithful. It's important when we are doing spiritual warfare to engage in the knowledge of who we are in Christ. If you look at our videos, a lot of them began in talking about who we are in Christ. The Bible tells us in Daniel 11, 32, but the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. It's important that we know our God. God. It's important that we know his character. It's important that we know his ability. Going through the book of Job, it amazed me because Job kept saying that something must be wrong somewhere because he knows he has not sinned and he also knows that God is faithful. So there is no way that there can be anything else. And not once did he curse God. And yet even as we give ourselves strength through the book of Job, it's important to note that Job continued to suffer and suffer and be hit by the enemy because he thought that God is the one who was punishing him. He did not know his enemy. And like I have said before, when you don't know your enemy, you won't know which weapon to use. So it's important to know your enemy. You will overcome battles more swiftly when you know your enemy. You know your enemy as you go still in the presence of the Lord and ask him to reveal to you what you're dealing with. Holy Spirit, what is this? Holy Spirit, what have I encountered? Holy Spirit, what is going on? Powerful prayer. It takes just a few seconds. Although sometimes the heat of battle is such that you can't really say that prayer. And so what do you do in such a situation where you crowd the blood of Jesus, the word of God, blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. The name of Jesus rebuke you right now. What else can you do in a situation where you are under attack? There's a situation I had where a certain, um, let me call it a thing, came into my room many years ago and it smothered me. So it covered my mouth, it covered my face, so I could not speak, I could not say anything. And in that place, I realized something, that you can pray in tongues internally, you can also cry out and ask Jesus, pray for me, say it inside. When Jesus intercedes for you, anything that is attacking you has to lift. Also to overcome the enemy, it's important to pray for the day of trouble. Because the Bible tells us that you will be tried when you are tried. When you are tried. The Bible also talks about the day of trouble. So in the day that everything is fine, pray for the day of trouble. That the Lord will show you how to walk. The Lord will show you how to arise against the enemy. Pray for the day of trouble that you may be able to stand in the power of God and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The other thing is about faithfulness. The other thing is about faithfulness in God. It's important for us to know that when you are faithful, there is nothing that the enemy can do. When you are faithful, there is nothing the enemy can do. Remember with the case of Job, he was allowed to go and attack Job and only because God asked him whether he had seen Job. He couldn't even try to accuse Job because there was nothing to accuse Job of. So be faithful. Be faithful to your God. Be faithful to our God. Whatever it takes, choose not to sin against him. Whatever it takes, choose to honor him. Whatever it takes, choose to stand for him. Whatever it takes, even though it feels like it's going to cost you your life, order God. Even when it doesn't make sense, God is faithful. He can't be anything but faithful. God is forever faithful and he will accomplish that which concerns us. So be faithful. So when it came to Job, finally, when you read the book of Job, Job begins to overcome the enemy when he finally begins to pray. When he stops lamenting, when he stops cursing the day that he was born, when he stops rebuking his friends, when he stops rebuking his wife, and he focuses on God and prays. And I love the way Job says that I came from my mother's womb naked and naked I shall return. If God gave me and God has taken away, then his name shall forever be praised. Of course, that doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of we know that it was not God taking away, it was the enemy. So what happens when you receive bad news? 
What happens when you receive an attack? I'll give you a fine example. Yesterday, we were celebrating with the children that have been coming for fellowship and we were so excited and God was moving. Then suddenly I received some devastating kind of news. But immediately, the Holy Spirit, as I asked him, what is this? How do I deal with this? The Holy Spirit told me, surely he who called you is faithful. So I spoke out loud and I said, Lord, I don't know how this one will end. But God, you're faithful. What does that do? It positions your heart not to sin. Very often as believers, we ask, why me, Lord? Why me, Lord? I'll ask you a question. If not you, then who? The moment you blame God, the moment you turn against God, the moment you think that God does not know what he's doing, sin enters into your life. There is a Cain and Abel factor. Abel, his sacrifice was accepted before the Lord. The word of God tells us, let us now offer ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable before God, because this is our true act of worship. Abel comes before God. That was before that time though, but this is how they worshiped. We worship through praise, through prayer, through honoring God, through obeying God today because of the blood of Jesus. He wasn't in the line of grace, he was in the line of law. But Abel comes and gives his sacrifice before God and God says it is pleasing and acceptable to him. Cain comes, offers a sacrifice before God and God turns away that sacrifice. A little later, and it's important to study this scripture so that you understand that God is forever faithful. A little later, Cain is approached by God and he's told, if you do not turn away, sin is encroaching. Sin is encroaching at your door. Cain got a warning. Sin is encroaching. You ask yourself then at that moment, what if Cain repented? Instead of saying, oh, you know what, let me be killed, let whatever happens happen. What if Cain simply repented, fell before the face of God and said, forgive me for I have sinned, my master, my savior, my Lord. What if he fell before God? We look at Jacob. So in this case, in terms of spiritual warfare, Abel was faithful. Cain was unfaithful. He goes on ahead and kills his brother, even though he has a warning from the Lord. The Lord will typically warn you. And that's why part of the title of this message is, but God who is rich in mercy. God will always warn you before warfare, before a test, before a trial, so that we may come through it safely. The word of God tells us that nothing has happened to us that is unique, that has not happened to someone else. But even then when we are tried, God will always provide a way out. God will never allow us to be tried beyond what we can bear. So before you look at someone going through a situation and begin to ask God, why is this person going through this? And blame them and blame God. Kneel down, hold your sister's hand, hold your brother's hand. Pray with them and tell them, all I know is that God is faithful. Submit yourself therefore to the Lord. Resist the enemy, he will flee from you. No matter your... Thank you, Jesus. Resist the enemy. Submit to the Lord. Resist the enemy. He will flee. In that order. Submit to the Lord. Submission is about faithfulness. Honoring the Lord. Believing that you know your God. And speaking of what you know about your God. Typically one of the weapons of warfare is proclaiming the character of God. And proclaiming your stand in relation to the thing that is testing you. In relation to the enemy and the character of God. Always the enemy will flee. The moment you say, I know my God, you're threatened with a situation. You're told news. Maybe you're given news of sickness. But immediately, the word that comes to mind, especially on issues of sickness, is whose report will you believe? Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. But we, the children of God, must trust in the strength of our God. He is all we have, saints of God. Never have a backup plan. The English tell us, never put your eggs in one basket. But that is foolishness before God. Because God says, put all your eggs in one basket. His basket. In investments, go before the Lord and ask him. Because your money will go through spiritual warfare. The enemy is trying to attack. But if you're a tither and you go before God, he promises to open the floodgates of heaven 
a parental blessing so great you will not have room enough to take it in but how do you receive that you receive that by giving to the Lord not so that you can get back but by giving to the Lord because you want it to be known to God that money has no hold on you you trust him more than silver or gold he's more precious to you than diamonds than any wealth and toll God can trust you with little if God can trust you with little he can trust you with more so your financial blessing it's possible that you're not getting a breakthrough because you're not tithing and when we tithe saints of God ask God where you should tithe into so that you're not tithing into a place that is cursed you're not tithing into a place where the devourer is already trying to take charge ask the Lord my money is for the sake of growing the gospel Lord where do I send this money where do I put it also the order of tithing before you do anything with your money separate the 10% on top it may be more than 10% the Lord may tell you to give away everything not a man or woman of God but the Spirit of God that speaks to you and says give away this one give away this one to me and remember God is not poor God is not poor God is not unable to supply for himself so the giving to the Lord is just coming to the Lord and circumcising the foreskin of our finances give with joy don't give so me may receive don't write your name on an envelope you can write the money because of accountability of those who are receiving it and seal the envelope however you need not write your name the moment you begin to write your name you are already receiving the praise of men I felt the need to talk about money if you're not tithing I don't know what to say to you because then you're a God robber and therefore no wonder your finances are being attacked but let me tell you when you tithe you will find a situation even where you leave your phone somewhere forget it but you can have the confidence of God I am a tither the devourer has been rebuked you will go and find your phone there you will go and find by the way you can lock your house and go and you know between your prayerfulness where the Bible tells us that he who abides in the secret place of the Almighty Psalms 91 indeed hides in the shadow of the Lord the psalm of protection the ultimate prayer of protection Psalms 91 if you're praying you're protected by that you're seeking the Lord's face you're protected by that you've given your life to Christ your life is not your own you are safe and then of course finally you're typing then there is nothing the enemy will do even if by any wild chance the Lord allows it like he allowed it with Job the Lord will soon return everything and even more than that which you have. So hold everything loosely and allow the Lord to move. After all, it's not ours. We surrender it to Him. Do you trust Him? Do you trust Him? There's a simple song we used to sing. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. He who called us is faithful. He who called us is able. If it seems like he's withholding something, it is for your good. If it looks like he's withholding something, investigate it spiritually. Enter into a fast and prayer and seek his face and find out, Lord, why? Is it just a delay of time? Is it a generation of hope? Is it something before your generation that is still holding on today? Is it a sin issue? Is it a faith issue? Is it a patience issue? Saints of God, the Lord is forever faithful. I was looking about Jacob and, uh, and Esau today, and uh, I was just, I just began to weep before God because God is so faithful. I look at that story, and at some point I'm like, God, this seems rather unfair. But here's the thing. From the point that the two began to wrestle in Rebecca's womb, there was already a prophecy that the older will serve the younger. So it was spoken. The Lord spoke. I'm reminded of Amos 3, 7. Before anything happens, God always speaks to his servants, the prophets. So he spoke. Then we look a little bit later and Esau got his name out of also the fact that he loved to eat. And he sounds like a glutton, unfortunately. And he carelessly gives away his birthright. 
Jacob tricks him and he gives away his birthright. Says, I'll exchange it for a meal. Warfare 101. What are you giving away to the enemy? You say carelessly, this is the only coin between me and poverty. And the devil says, Amen. You say, oh, I'm doomed. You know words that we are used to using because we've heard other superstars and people using them. It sounds posh. When you say you're doomed, no wonder damnation comes upon you, jumps on you and overtakes you, even though God says that you are blessed beyond every curse. You say, this shall never happen, instead of proclaiming, because life and death lies in the power of the tongue. The word of God also tells us that God is not only faithful, but he's more than able. Impossible is not in the dictionary of the Lord. So why are you, oh saint of God, confessing it can't happen? It will never happen. Never, ever. Never, ever. Or something small happens and say, oh, I'm finished. Oh, I'm dead. I know it sounds like a joke. But may the Lord put a guard between your mind, your heart, and your mouth that you will not speak curses on yourself. Because the moment you curse yourself, the moment you curse a thing, then it becomes. Your husband or your wife is philanderous. And all you do is tell your friends and you say, my husband, my wife is philanderous. I can say philanderous because I'm not speaking to a particular husband or wife. I'm describing the behavior. But for you, you and you're so angry, you say this one is so useless. He can never do anything. This one is so useless. She's like a prostitute. She's so useless. What are you speaking? Why don't you say, standing on Daniel 10, 12, that I know that from the moment that I prayed, God sent help, but maybe the angel is being attacked in the air. And so Lord, I join in warfare and I pray, Lord God, because you're faithful, come through for my marriage. You got, of course, it depends again on the foundation of your marriage. Some of us are there crying to God and yet your marriage is founded on the wrong thing. You stole somebody's husband, you stole somebody's wife. Maybe you are already given to another. If you already slept with somebody else, sexually you are already connected to another person. So maybe that's why your marriage is going through the things it's going through. Because there's a soul tie that needs to be broken. And moving to this. It's important that I mention, 29th of October. If you are in Kenya, you need to come for the Sozo session. It is free. There is no charge for it. From morning 8 a.m. all day, set it aside and let, come, let us do warfare. That when you stand, you know it is definitely not a spiritual, you know, generational thing that the enemy is standing on. Some of us want to get married and we're trusting the Lord. Some of us are virgins beyond the age of 30 and we've been waiting upon the Lord. Nothing you have been faithful. Still, this spouse is not coming. What is the enemy using? What is the enemy using? Some of us want to get married and yet you were with somebody's spouse at some point. Someone who's married but you became their second thing. What about the tears of that person as they cried and said, Lord God, this thing that comes between me and my marriage, arise and fight it. The Lord may still be fighting you because of that sin in the past, because your repentance did not follow the guidance of spiritual warfare from the Holy Spirit. There are ways that you must pray if you have slept with a married person. Specific ways. We will guide you on that. Because you don't want a situation where the Lord wants to bless you and the enemy appears as an accuser of the brethren. The Lord showed me a vision many years ago of how the enemy comes and an accuser of the brethren before God and says, no, 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 they have done. No, 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 they did. No, 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 they did. And God steps aside. And that's why the Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So you're perishing even though you're God's person because you don't have knowledge. So it is possible. Premature death. Some of us, we go to funerals at our homes and we are okay with burying a child. Why would you be okay with a child being buried? Why would you be okay with somebody below the age of 85 being buried? And you say, oh, well, you know, they lived a full life. Really? 
Premature death is not our portion. Jesus died young so that you and I would not die young. What do you proclaim? What do you declare? If you had a spirit of suicide and wanted to die for the longest time and now you're enjoying plenty, you're enjoying the things of God, it's important to be careful to rebuke that spirit of suicide, to repent from the spirit of suicide once God has delivered you so that you declare that, Lord, I want to enjoy full life. Proclaim scripture about long life in the name of Jesus. Be faithful. You cannot expect to receive the blessings of the cross without paying the price of salvation. Salvation was given for free, but to enter into deep places with God, there is a price to pay. We must fast and seek the Lord's face. We must ask God to deal with us, whatever it is inside of us that is not dead, it must die. For we have been crucified with Christ and we therefore no longer live the life we live in the body. We live through the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. I finish with this. A lady asked today on Facebook, I'm reading about the things of the saints, the earlier people, the ones that came before us and the price that they paid and the things that they went through and the battle that they fought and i'd shared this as well the other day about how god got me reading about the disciples and how they died and what they went through and what a price they paid that this gospel may reach us and the lady added and said i ask myself some of us are busy claiming all these promises in the word of god yet how are we living how are we living you cannot enjoy the full benefits of the cross without the work of the cross. Allow the cross of Jesus Christ to cut you deep. Allow the cross of Jesus Christ to do its work in your life. Enter into prayer and fasting asking the Lord, Lord, what does not glorify you in my life? Lord, tear me apart. Break me and make me. Allow the Lord to turn you into that thing that pleases him. For whenever it is written in the word of God that God was pleased with so and so, the next thing that followed was blessings. Saints of God, when you allow the Lord to work on you, you will walk in humility. Remember also, spiritual warfare is about assignment. You can't go picking battles that are not yours. The Lord needs to confirm this is your battle. This is your portion. You've been appointed for this. And yet some of us quickly and lazily say, this one is for a higher person. Which higher person is this? Why aren't you getting to higher heights? Why are you still on spiritual milk? I was talking on the inbox with a lady who's been born again for only two years. And she decided to write and just encourage me and speak to me about what the Lord was saying about the social ministry. And I blessed the Lord because he spoke so powerfully through her. And I was shocked to learn that it's only been two years since she gave her life to Christ. But she's so strong in the Lord. Some of us have been born again 10 years. 15 years, but we are still on spiritual milk. We need to move to meat. Meat, strong meat, as the Bible calls it, that we may war for the Lord. Remember, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. When we have a dormant Christian, then you're not counted as a laborer who is active. Arise and fight. Please pray for the warring countries. Remember South and Sudan. Let us pray and commit them to the Lord. Let us battle. Remember the Lord has said, ask of me and I'll give you the nations as an inheritance. Remember also we are co-heirs with Christ and the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to God. So we have every authority to arise and cast the enemy out of nations and say, let the Lord's will prevail in the name of Jesus. I love you. God bless you. Shalom. Stay faithful. We love you. Amen.